Look, what I'll say about League of Legends is this, okay? It, as long as we beat 100 thieves, it gives me some fuel to talk to Nade when we're out at a wedding, you know? I, I sent him a text afterwards and I'm like, hey man, you know, I just want to say GG's, keep your head up. Take it easy, guys. I need to dive, dude. Don't, don't dive into this. Or, <laughs> ho, ho, ho! Dive that caca. Move it down. Hey, it's triple C. Dive back, bro. What you said? This Mipa just gonna die, isn't he? Bro, <laughs> he's dead. He's buying back. I mean, there's no necro. There's no phoenix. They're both dead. Yeah, yeah Mipa's just healing. I mean, Mipa fucking died. Oh, he did. Yes. Hey, he fall back too. Babe is dead. He just wants this lichen. Lichen? GG. <laughs> Woo! Nice. It's over, dude. No fucking way. So we're just, it's just done, right? It's done. Yeah. yeah. We are it's done. done. That's so awesome. Woo! Zai. Do the green wall, baby. Yeah, so I don't, I don't really like to use the R word retirement too much, but I did take a year off. I stepped down as a player for EG and took over the role of CEO uh, for 12 months. And that was, um, it was a complicated scenario. I never really, I knew that I wanted to like be a business owner and I knew that like being a CEO at some point or any like high level business management position would be something that would be right up my alley. I didn't really expect it to come that soon and I was almost, my hand was kind of forced into either leaving EG entirely or taking over as the CEO. So I chose the latter and I, I missed Dota. I didn't play Dota very much that year, which was in hindsight, you know, probably really holding me back this year. Uh, I probably played maybe 10 games a month. So compare that to all the other guys out here playing Dota every single day for 10 hours. I, I feel like I definitely slipped um, pretty far behind in terms of like individual skill. So this year has been a lot of fun to kind of come at it from a new perspective, almost like a fresh start back in 2014 when I switched to Dota um, from Heroes of New Earth for the very first time. So this has been um, a good progression year, I think. I'm pretty happy about the prize, like the prizes and the results that we've had throughout the season and then to finish it all off with a top eight finish at TI. and like, you know, 600 or whatever, how many thousand dollars we won is, uh, it's, uh, I don't feel too, I don't feel too uh, disappointed. All right, all right, so you guys coming with? Me. Yeah. Grab my coffee. What a disaster. <laughs> This was a brand new team. A lot of teams stick around for you know years. You have you, know, you have Puppy at Team Secret. You have Kuro at Team Liquid. You have No Tail at OG. Like these guys have been on these teams for three to four years, and they've been constantly doing whatever it takes to improve. Whether that means changing rosters or changing roles or just kind of like changing team dynamics to find success. So this was our this was our first go at it, our first 12 months. And we, I mean, like I said, we did pretty well. We only made one roster change and that was when Misery decided to leave the team. But other than that, like we didn't change, we didn't like forcibly change roster or use that as like an excuse for poor results. We just continued to work hard and, and uh, have progress, which is, I mean, you can't ask for much more. In the group stages, we ended up squeezing barely into the upper bracket. Uh, we got fourth in our group, and then we were immediately selected by last year's defending champions, the winners of Group A and TI7, Liquid. Uh, we played them in our first, at the very first game of the International on the main stage at Rogers Arena, and we kind of got our asses kicked. Uh, well, it's not kind of. We did get our asses kicked, and it was... Uh, 
it was a revelating experience. It was also just, I think we had a little bit of nerves. I don't think we were really prepared for that kind of a stage. And anyways, you know, we had the next, I think we had next day we had to play against Team Serenity, who had upset Fnatic the day before in the best of ones. And we ended up beating them 2-0. It was a team that we were pretty confident in playing against. We had gotten some experience up against them in the group stage. So going into the playoffs and playing them on the main stage was something that we were already pretty familiar with. And we felt like we were the better team, which actually helps uh, quite a lot, whether you mean it or not. It's like when we played against Liquid, I, I think that everybody on our team would agree that we didn't really feel like we were the better team. So you kind of play with a little less confidence than you would ideally would want to play with. and. I feel like that confidence can be built over time, but it's hard to just imagine yourself there or put yourself in that in that mindset when um, I think you know most of us are pretty realistic people. So after that win over Serenity, we ended up getting the opportunity to play against Virtus Pro, who have been our rivals throughout the entire year, kind of you know blocking us from qualifying to the international through the DPC system a couple of different times. We won the first game and. Things were going really well, and in, in the second game, we were happy with our draft, and we felt like we had them. You know, we felt like we had them, but uh, they just outplayed us and outclassed us, and they took that game. And then the third game, I'm not totally sure what went wrong. I mean, I do know what went wrong. I just feel like we were really outdrafted, and we're not the kind. I don't think that we are skilled nor confident enough to win games when we're behind in the draft. Whereas better teams oftentimes will win games like when they maybe did lose the draft, like game two, for example. I feel like we outdrafted them and could have won, but they ended up winning. Yeah, so for expectations for me for this year, I feel like I didn't really know exactly what I was getting into when I came back as a player. And I've, I've talked about it before a couple different times when I learned that Zai was actually leaving EG and wanted to join our team. I felt like at that point I knew that our team was going to be at a much higher skill level, uh, which I wasn't. I was just committed to playing, regardless of how good my team was or was going to be. I just wanted to begin that grind once again. And when Zai joined, I realized that we were going to skip a couple of different steps and maybe jump closer to the top uh, than I originally had planned. Expectations for the team. We've, we've had a pretty, um, we've had a really good year, but like when you're a top Dota player and you go to TI and you get top eight, like it almost feels mediocre. Uh, because you know the, the same guys that you beat at a tournament four months ago are you know they're competing tomorrow for the grand you know in the grand finals right and uh, it's you know you shouldn't compare yourself to other people but it's kind of hard not to so like I said it's not a disappointing year it's just um, it's just part of the it's just part of the progression, right? Like uh, losing is like something that Dota players do all the time. We do it way more than we win, and it's about dealing with those losses and being able to move forward and continuing to work hard and not giving up. And hopefully, with a little bit of luck, you'll find yourself in uh, some really cool places. Big shout out to all the fans who took the time to watch this and listen to some guy who plays video games. Um, you know, rant about his, uh, his struggles, his trials and tribulations. Uh, but for really, uh, I think that the Optic fan base has been great. I feel like a lot of more people have gotten into Dota because of our team. And I, that's, I mean, that's exactly what we're trying to do is just make Dota a cooler game, make more people play it, build our community, just bigger and bigger and bigger so we can continue to progress. I, playing Dota f for a living is really, really cool. I want more people to be able to do that, whether it's, whether it's playing or just like working in esports or working in Dota, I feel like the more people, the, the better. So um, big shout out to everybody that enables it by whether it's watching or buying merchandise or just watching your favorite player streams. Any, any way that people are contributing, it's, it's super great and it, it helps out a bunch. So what's next for you? What's next for me? I am moving to Dallas the day after I get back from this tournament. So I think on Monday, I'm. I'm loading up the Jeep and uh, getting a rental truck and filling it up and driving down to, I'm not moving to Frisco, I'm moving to downtown Dallas. So I'll be, I'll be in the vicinity, so I'm hopefully gonna be in some more optic content, you know, who knows, or, I'm, or maybe I'll just be in Dallas, you know? So we'll see how it goes. Uh, as for the team, it's, it's hard to say. It's, it's TI, it's uh, 
TI roster mania, I guess you could call it. Um, I feel like everybody on this team worked really hard. I feel like everybody was the Dota player that they needed to be in order to find, like, find progress. And at the end of the day, I feel like that's the most important thing is to always be improving. So very proud of myself and everybody on my team for giving it 100% this year. I want to say we had a really good League of Legends season um, from a management perspective because we have been able to create a full structure and infrastructure um, from scratch in a year. Obviously the results are not the one we expected. Uh, my hidden goal was to make playoff at least once. Uh, we definitely failed for the first split. We almost reached it for the uh, second split, so it's a bit disappointing, obviously, but it also means we did a good job in the second split. Summer season as a whole, I think it started pretty well. We kind of went downhill for some time. We lost a lot of games in a row. I think people lost hope. Additionally to even the players kind of were like, mm, can we still make it? Can we still like do it? But then we managed to take down all the giants like Cloud9, CLG, TSM, and we managed to get this big win streak going. And at this point, I think everyone of us believed we can still do it. And it was hella close. It was hella of a ride. Not making playoffs is really sad, especially since it was so close. But I feel like to some degree we didn't really deserve it since we missed out on these like must must wins like CG. Like this is like if you want to be playoffs. They're a team where you should just take the free wins, you know? Like, they didn't have a good split, good summer split, and they beat us two times. While they're like, like eight or nine or ten, if I can't remember, but like, they're under us, right? Like, we need to beat them, we need to be able to beat them and get that win for us. And we didn't get it, so that was really hard. Afterwards, uh, we had our second chance against TSM. If we win that one, we can still make it, and I think we're 100% in actually, but we lost it since. Honestly, Botlane had like an off day. They didn't feel well. They didn't play that good. It just happens, but it's just sad that like it happened on this day, right? And then, but I told the team like it doesn't really matter. I think it actually the nerves came to them as well. I think it was probably a little bit of nerves as well because it was like for some of, some of them it was the most important match in their life since they were never to playoffs besides Arrow. So like it's a tie, like nearly like a tiebreaker, right? If you win that game, you're in. If you lose the game, you're out, right? So I think they felt this pressure on themselves and that's why I don't think they did as good as they probably should have. On the next day against, I think it was Hunter Thieves, we managed to get a good comeback. It was a hell of a close game. We came back, we kept the dream alive, but I think CG and Team Liquid both lost, so there was no tiebreaker and no, no auto gratification. So yeah, we just didn't make it, but I feel like we tried everything and it, is, it was just not good enough. It was like a roller coaster, you know, it starts well, first bump, you know, next year, you know, it's first bump, then it goes down all the way, and then it goes all down, up, down, up, and then in the end we didn't make it. So, what, what, what do we learn from all that? So, um, disappointing season from a result perspective, a really good season from a building a structure perspective, um, and, and so I want to keep the coaching staff. I think they did a good job. I want to keep the structure in terms of physical physical uh, location in, in LA. I think the system to have the players living in an apartment and coming to work every day in a place where we provide them with structure, food, drinks, coaching staff. We help them to carry knowledge from one game to the other, refining it from game to game. Uh, I think that was really good. Uh, I, I want that for 2019. Holiday sucks in League of Legends uh, because it means you're out of the tournament. Basically, the season never stops. So if you're an international level player, you play all the time. Uh, you play first split, you play between the split, playoff, and then you go MSI if you're the best team. Second split, playoff, world preparation, worlds, and then off season. Um, so right now the team is on holidays. Uh, everyone is gonna chill a bit in LA for two two weeks, create content, talk to each other, uh, prepare 
prepare the suitcase and go back home. They're on holidays. Uh, really salty holidays, obviously, because we're not qualified. Um, it's a lot of holidays. I can understand uh, how you would feel and react towards that on the other side of the camera. Uh, but you also have to remember being a professional League of Legends player and overall being a pro player is not an easy job. It's a really beautiful job and for League of Legends it's most of the time really well paid but you work all the bloody time from Monday to Sunday. Like you never have a break and you're not home. You're most of the time not with your friends, far away from your family. So you, you can't really resource, you can't really get back in, in your comfort zone. So that's why those like a month's holidays to actually cut, cut from the training life and go back home, go back family and realize how exceptional your life is. That, that's much needed. So everyone home. Uh, and then off season is going to start right after Worlds. Uh, so that's what we're going to prepare now. Uh, we were heavily under prepared in 2018. We're going to face 2019 way better um, from from a roster perspective, uh, my absolute priority is to, to, to keep power of evil. And actually, most of the guys, uh, we're going to have to talk with them in like a month, I think. Uh, we're just going to give everyone a bit of time to chill and, and then we're going to discuss off-season. Uh, as soon as everyone is resigned, uh, it's going to be boot camp uh, to discover the new patch and stuff like that. So it's probably going to be November like a month boot camp. Uh, I'm not too sure if that's going to be Korea or China. Uh, Korea has been the usual place where teams go to boot camp, but Chinese solo queue is on the rise and it's getting better and better in terms of quality. So we might we might have the boot camp in China. Uh, then players go back home for one last uh, shot of family, which is usually Christmas, uh, at least definitely in Europe. And then, then we start again, January 2019. <laughs>as you guys know, recently we had a terrible tragedy within the esports community. And we as Optic Gaming really want to be able to stand up and support our fellow brothers and sisters of all esports communities. So that means by the time you guys are watching this, tomorrow at 2 p.m. Central, we're going to be doing a Madden charity stream to support the victims' families. Now, we're going to have all kinds of cool stuff going on. We're going to be playing Madden 19. We're going to be having Big Timer, Embos, Midnight, the Gears of War roster, as well as some special guests that we haven't announced yet, hanging out at the Optic Training House and doing all kinds of cool stuff on Madden, playing games, and really just having a good time. The stream's gonna be from two to eight central time, and make sure that you guys come out and really support the stream and show what the Green Wall is all about.